whatever looks like a case that the enemy has been using against you that case is sorted now before this day is over it is evident that your captivity is torn God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedepo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedepo. Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my life whole again. Spirit move over me. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and celebrate Him. Spirit, we invite you this morning. We invite you specially this morning. Have your way in our midst today. Have your way in our midst today. Have your way in our midst today. Holy Spirit, we invite you specially this hour. Have your way in our midst this moment. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. You may please be seated. Thank you, Father. Not by power and not, not by might. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Not by power, nor by might. We are not just living in the, in, this, in the strange days of the church, if language permits, we are living in the strangest days of the church. But this strange realm is only accessible and the benefits thereof are only realizable by the Spirit of God. To operate in the realm of unlimited breakthroughs is only made possible by the operation of the Spirit of God. Man's breakthrough story in scriptures is rooted in the operation of the Spirit of God. 
God formed man out of the dust. A man became a tattoo. And God breathed into man, Genesis 2, 7, and man became a living soul by the breath of God. So man's functionality began with the operation of the breath of God. So the Spirit of God is at the foundation of man's breakthrough as a man. So your supernatural breakthrough and my supernatural breakthrough is rooted in the workings of the Spirit of God. That is so vital. This is so important. And then we saw the prophetic drama of Ezekiel 37 in verse 1 to 14. And there were many dry bones in the open field. There were many, many afflicted, buffeted, defrauded believers on the streets today. There were very many, and behold, they were very, very dry. And then the Lord said to Ezekiel, can these bones live, son of man? He said, oh God, thou knowest, this one is beyond my imagination. He said, prophesy to these bones. And I prophesied to them, and there was a noise and a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to his bones. And as I beheld, flesh covered them, and skin covered the flesh. And then he said, prophesy, son of man, to the winds that they breathe upon this lane. And I prophesied, as so I was commanded, and breath came into them and they lived and there arose in that valley a mighty host unto God supernatural breakthrough by the breath of God from the valley of vanity there came assets of highest values by the breath of God and he said these dry bones are the whole house of Israel for they say, our bones are dry and we are cut off from our part. But thus saith the Lord, I will open your graves, my people. How? By my breath. Can I hear your amen? amen? The breath of God, the breath of life is coming on you this month. Amen. And no grave will have power to hold you back. All your values that have been eroded, they are coming back in full force. Yeah. Everything ever stolen from you, God is restoring them forcefully back to your life. Yeah. So that prophetic drama goes again to confirm the event of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. He breathed into man and man became a living soul. And he breathed upon very dry bones and a mighty host arose. This year, whatever has looked dry around your life, God is turning them to testimonies of amazement. And now we moved on to another prophetic drama in Zechariah chapter 4. And verse 1 to 6. And he said, what do you see, son of man? He said, I, I have looked and behold, I saw a candlestick. And with a bowl on it, all of gold. And I saw two olive trees, one bought by the right and one by the left. Two olive trees. Two olive trees. He said, what mean is this, my Lord? He said, don't you know what that means? Can't you see the olive trees? This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It is, I have a golden destiny for you, but it is not realizable by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. See the Lord God of hosts, verse 6. Not by power. We are in the golden age of the church. You are in the golden season of your life because the church is not a building. The church is a people. So you are in the golden season of your life. 
But that golden era is not realizable by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord God of hosts. So we are not in a battle of words. Paul said, I have not come to you with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and in demonstration of the spirit. The kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. First Corinthians 4.20 So it is empowerment that defines your placement in the kingdom. It is empowerment that defines your placement in the kingdom. God ruled by his power forever. Psalm 66 verse 7 He ruled by his power forever his eyes behold the nations all the nations let not the rebellious exhort themselves God will cut them down because he ruled by his power forever you have been redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth but it takes empowerment to taste enthronement you cannot reign until you are empowered. So when people are reigning, they say they are in power. Amen. They are in power. So until you are empowered, you cannot reign. Revelation 5.10 You have been redeemed to reign, but to never taste the throne until you are empowered. Because the opposition is opposing you by power. You can only subdue the opposition by power. Rust Kamala to Shaga. You can only subdue the opposition by power. There was no way for this church to arrive at Canaan land without empowerment. There was a power here before we came. We have to overcome that power to possess the land. It was in the plan of God. This was in his plan before the foundation of the world. He said, at the base of this ministry, a tabernacle will be built that will seat 50,000. God has he marked this place, but it takes empowerment to take it. He takes what? How many witches has, have died? We can't count them. How many wizards have been buried? We can't count them. It takes, look, your portion in destiny can never be delivered without empowerment. That's why this month is very vital to your destiny. This month is most vital to the fulfillment of your destiny. It takes empowerment to have your destiny fulfilled. This is so important. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Just like man was of no value until the breath of God came, destiny is of no real value without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Your real value and my real value is determined by the power of God at work in our lives. Can I hear your amen? amen. Your real value and my real value is absolutely defined by the power of God at work in us not by power nor by might a great door and effectual is opened unto me but there are many adversaries and to subdue them through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee psalm 66 and verse 3 through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee through the greatness of thy power so the enemy won't give up on your eloquence or oration or capacity to impress people 
The enemy only respects the language of power. The language of power. Those boys demonstrated how Paul did it. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you, come out of him. Ah, yeah, yeah. You think we are having drama here? Do you know how to run? They say, yes, get ready now. I'll give you the hottest taste of your life. We don't respect what here. No, we respect only power. Jesus, I know Paul, I know, but who are you? You think they're just using words? No. They are empowered to command authority. Somebody was in power yesterday, he's no longer in power today, so he cannot command authority again. No. He can only be ex-president. So it's not just to be empowered, it's to stay in power. You have to stay in power. A great door and effect has opened unto you, but there are many adversaries. Every child of God is born into a world of no limits. Come and say, a world of no limit. <laughs> no door can be greater than that because Jesus said, <laughs> Whosoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. John 14 12. And greater works than these shall he do. And greater works than these shall he do. First John 4 17. For as he is in heaven, so are we now in this world. Every child of God is born into a world of no limit. A world of no limit. As he is in heaven, even so are we now in this world. When you are born again, you are raised up together with him and made to sit together with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. And that is located far above all principalities and powers. Ephesians 1, 20 and 21. So, new birth is a birth into a world of no limits. But why are we still so limited? Because we are not empowered to assess that realm. Because we are not empowered to assess that realm. Now think of it. The word says in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 all the way to 13. It says, if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe all that he commands you today that the Lord your God will set you up on high above all nations of the earth. Uh -huh. Somebody say, well, that's in the Old Testament. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17 you think I've come to destroy the law? You mess up. I've not come to destroy the law, I've come to fulfill them. So Jesus came to validate the blessings of God in the law, which the people there could not enter into because they don't have capacity to enter into it. So if you are saved, you are born into a world of no limit, ordained to be set up above all nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. This is so important. That's where you belong. The question is, why am I not there? Why am I not operating in the reality of this? Why is it just sounding like a tale because you need to be empowered to get there you need to be empowered to get there these are very interesting things you are born for the topmost top because as he is, so are we now in this world. And the Bible says, as Father, Father sent me, so have I sent you. And he said, I, Jesus, have sent my angels to declare this into the churches. I am the root and the offering of David, the bright and the morning star. Revelation 22, verse 16. So every child of God is a potential star. 
So why are we not all shining as stars? A star connotes best among equals. Best among equals in your field. Best among equals in your businesses. Best among equals in the ministry of the gospel. Best among equals. Revelation 2, 6, 16. And that's your heritage in redemption. Because as the Father has sent him, so as he sent you and me. To realize that, we need to be empowered. The breakthrough of every child of God, because it's a seed of Abraham, is as far as his eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see unto you will I give it. Genesis 13 and 14 and 15 verses. And you cannot see any deeper than you are anointed. Revelation 3 verse 17. And let your eyes be anointed with thy eyes selves that thou mayest see. For the Spirit of God teach, teaches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. First Corinthians 2 verse 10. The deep things of God is only accessible by the empowerment of the Spirit of God. So you can't see any deeper that you are truly empowered. That means your destiny is limited by that empowerment. It is therefore the empowerment of the spirit that defines the limits of your accomplishment in life. It is the empowerment of the spirit that defines the limits of your exploits in life. Therefore, empowerment has no substitute in your adventure on earth. Empowerment has no substitute in your adventure on earth. Paul was praying, he said, I pray that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may see what is the greatness of his power towards us that believe, that you may see Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. So you are empowered to see you cannot see beyond the level of that empowerment in your life. So in our year of unlimited breakthrough, empowerment becomes a principal requirement to take delivery of your own portion. This is surely going to be the greatest year of your entire life. Because getting started on this journey with a crave for empowerment will make all the difference. And I'd like you to understand that behind every notable breakthrough in Bible history is the demonstration of the power of God. At the root of every notable breakthrough testimony is the power of God at work. The flight of Joseph from the prison to the palace was by empowerment. Can we find a man such as this? Is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Ah, and that Spirit was what showed them, in as much as God has shown you all these things. There is no one as wise and discreet as thou art. Come on now, take over. And Joseph came out of the prison to take over the reign in Egypt. Somebody is coming out of obscurity finally. Yeah. They will send for you from very strange quarters. Yeah. This year God will decorate you with very strange honors. Yeah. 
this year god my god will decorate you with very strange honor this year the god that i serve will decorate you with strange honor we saw four children in the land of captivity in babylon daniel shadrach meshach and abednego and talking about daniel we have clear references of what was working in him the bible said there is one man in that kingdom your kingdom that his name is called Bethsazar, in whom is the spirit of the holy god daniel chapter 5 verse 11 and 12 in whom is the spirit of the holy ghost so at work in the life of daniel for such strange dimension of exploits was the spirit of god at work and never mind the devil knows what to carry i said the devil knows what to carry the devil knows what to carry the devil knows what to carry in mark chapter 1 verse 34 jesus did not allow them to see because those people they knew who he was mark 1 34 look for 41 he did not allow them to speak because they knew who he was now ask chapter 19 verse 14 to 16 ah jesus i know paul i know the devil knows how much you weigh you can't pretend to anybody in the church the devil knows your weight the devil knows your weight you better increase your weight stop making fun in church you better settle down and increase your weight now there are those who cast out devils mark chapter 16 in my name you cast out devils there are those who torment devils glory to god i adjure thee that thou torment us not there are those who destroy devils have you come to destroy us before the time so it's all in the grace. There are devil casters. There are devil tormentors. And there are devil destroyers. They're all in different categories. You cast it out, it can go away and come back and check. But you torment it, it will think twice. You destroy it, it won't come again. You destroy it, it won't come again. You cast it. I said, when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he goes about in dry place seeking rest. And when he comes, I said, let me go and check whether the place is still free. But you torment it. Rupaka Shaga. I said, ah, no, I can't go there now. No, I know what I suffered. I was casting out one devil and then he vomited. I said, lick it now. Now! Come out of him and get out of here. Lick the, there was no rug on the floor. Lick you vomit in my, my place. Devil. Lick it now. You think it will come back there again? There are devil casters, there are devil tormentors, and there are devil destroyers. It's all in the grace. Beginning from today. No demon play fele fele around where you live. <laughs> Every child of God is ordained to live in a world of no limits, but that is made possible by the empowerment of the spirit of god your breakthrough into life began with the spirit your restoration of dignity is also by the spirit your restoration of color is also by the spirit think of jesus for instance in a moment he was born of the Holy Ghost because everyone that is born again is born of the Spirit because whatever is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit so you can't be born again except by the Spirit of God no one can see Jesus is Lord by the Spirit of God so you are born again, agree but he was he had no identity he had no identity until Luke chapter 3 verse 23 he was being baptized and praying and then the heavens opened and the Holy Ghost came upon him and the voice came and said here this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He had identity. 
by the empowerment of the Spirit. And then, he gained command. He was enthroned. Luke chapter 4 verse 14. After fasting and praying, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And his fame spread abroad through all the region. Ran about. His enthronement was established by the empowerment of the Spirit. And then in verse 37, and his fame spread abroad in all the country, ran about. Luke 4, 37. He took the region, then he took the country, ran about. Chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles. The Holy Ghost came, and immediately 3,000 people were added to the church. Say with me, Mr. Bajoray, breakthrough every supernatural breakthrough of a child of God is by the empowerment of the spirit Luke chapter 4 verse 4 5,000 people are added to the church in one sweep Luke 5 and verse 14 multitudes both of men and women were added to the church Acts chapter 6 and verse 7 oh many priests became obedient to the faith the number of disciples multiplied greatly breakthrough unlimited it is that same breakthrough that is breaking up to you now the church that started in the upper room is what is breaking forth on all the earth today this is second service you can't tell millions of locations where people are gathered together worshiping jesus by the breakthrough that the holy ghost prepared two thousand years ago something is breaking forth in somebody's life today yeah. that if jesus started thousands of years they'll be talking about it That's the way it works. And very quickly this morning, I'd like us to appreciate one of the vital forces of the Spirit that empowers you for breakthrough unlimited. That force of the Spirit is called the Spirit of Faith. What do they call it? The spirit of faith is one of the most powerful virtues required for commanding supernatural breakthroughs. The heroes of faith listed in Hebrews chapter 11 that commanded generational breakthroughs had it by the operation of the spirit of faith they had their names engraved on this hall of fame by the instrumentality of the spirit of faith This spirit of faith is a transgenerational virtue. It moves from one generation to another. Paul said, and we have the same spirit of faith. Come and say the same. Say with me the same. The same spirit of faith. So it's the same spirit of faith that is moving from one generation to another it's not a new one it's the same second corinthians 4 13 and we have in the same spirit of faith we have believed therefore we've spoken so it's the same spirit of faith one generation shall serve you unto another and declare thy mighty works how shall we do the works of christ the work of christ to believe on him come on now john chapter 6 and verse 27 what shall we do that we might walk the works of God? He said the work of God is by believing him whom he has sent. So the work of God from generation to generation is operated by the spirit of faith. That means that spirit moves from one generation to another. 
And I'm glad to let you know something is moving on your life today. So the spirit of faith is a transferable virtue. Is what? Is a transferable virtue. The spirit of faith is a transferable virtue. The spirit of faith is a transferable virtue. The spirit of faith is a transferable virtue. So when you locate a carrier of it, you can tap into it from him. It's a transferable virtue. Somebody was asking from Kennedy again of blessed memory. He said, Upon whom fell the mantle of Smith Wugu's word? He said, I cannot tell upon who, but one thing I know is that I read all I could lay hands upon concerning him and from him until something from him rubbed in on me. One generation shall serve thee unto another and declare thy mighty works. Psalm 144 verse 5. So it moved from him into him. There is a great, great man of God on the stage today, a mighty evangelist by name Benny Hay. You could see tangibility of transference of unction from Catherine Crewman into that vessel. How many can see that? The spirit of faith is a transferable virtue. It cannot be reinvented. You can only encounter that from those who carry it. This morning by the ministration of the mystery of the man too, I see a bodily transference of the spirit of faith on everyone in this service today. And the Holy Ghost fell upon him in a bodily form like a dove. Bodily form. July 26, 1986. Something jumped into me from Kennedy again. In an eruptive manner. It was like an explosive planted into a man. It exploded and I lost control i was sobbing uncontrollably and the spirit of god said to me right there in the midst of the sobbing my son david the button has been passed over to you so it goes from generation to generation and i can tell you this the spirit of faith for this age is bodily residing here it's bodily residing here you can This whole ministry began with zero bank balance. Mm. Yet never begged once. Nor played on people once for offerings. There is something here for you this morning. I will open up my heart. I'm ready for your holy fire. I will let you into my heart and into my soul. Pledging my life, serving you is my desire. I won't be holding back at all, responding to your call. There is something out here for you this morning. Something from which you will never recover the remaining days of your life. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord God of hosts. The spirit of faith is a principal weapon in commanding supernatural breakthroughs. The spirit of faith. Let's look at it from the man called Abraham, the father of faith. In Luke chapter 11, I mean in Hebrews chapter 11 
and verse 8 to 10, we have the following interesting statements made by the Holy Ghost here. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance, obey, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. That's not regular faith. That's the spirit of faith. An old man at 75 could not go out and ask, where are you going? He said, I don't know. They say, okay, how are you going? He said, he said, he will show me where I'm going as I go. Okay, when you get to the motor park, if there were motors, what, where would you say you are going? Anywhere. He will show me as I'm going. That was the faith of Abraham. Come and say the faith of Abraham. That was the spirit of faith in a figure. It was walking long before Jesus came down here. The spirit of faith. And the Bible says, in verse 9, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as a strange, in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, foundations whose builder and maker is God. Verse 17, By faith Abraham also, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, upon whom these promises are to be fulfilled, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be, that shall thy seed be called. Accounting, verse 19 together, let's read. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. That was the faith of Abraham. Now listen to me. Enlisting the heroes, of scriptures god began with abraham and abraham got it by faith by the operation of the spirit of faith and god wants to bless you and i after the order of abrahamic blessing that means you must possess whatever abraham possessed in order to realize such level of blessings therefore today i see the spirit of faith the same that was working in Abraham coming afresh on your life. Coming afresh on your life. In the name of Jesus. He said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee, for I called him alone, and I bless him, and I increase him. For the Lord will comfort Zion. Isaiah 51, verse 1 to 3. He will comfort all our waste places. He will turn our wilderness into Eden. This year, God is turning everyone's wilderness into Eden. Yeah. And it will turn our desert into the garden of the Lord. Yeah. God is turning your, your desert into a flourishing garden. Yeah. God is saying, I want to bless you as I bless Abraham. But in John 8, 39, if you are Abraham, see and you desire the blessing of Abraham. He said, do the works of Abraham. Do the works of Abraham. That means, connect with what was working in Abraham. And then you'll be empowered to operate in the realm of Abraham. Therefore, I decree today, a fresh impartation of the spirit of faith on your life. Amen. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And then he went on and we saw in verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was called, come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Refused. You just refuse to be called the name that God has not called you. He refused to be called. He refused to be called. 1987, my wife and I were in the U.S. and we were at a meeting. And then after the meeting, a man walked up to us, you know, a white American friend. And he said, what needs have you in your ministry? I said, our ministry has no needs. Ah, do I look needy? Our ministry has no needs. 
I don't know how my wife felt when I said our ministry has no needs. You know, the spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. Yes, sir. It speaks from within you. He said, don't bother about what to say. The spirit of your father is the one that speaks in you. It's a speaking spirit. Proof. That's what makes it different from the word of faith. The word of faith has to be spoken by you. The spirit of faith speaks through you. It speaks through you. It is the spirit of your father that speaketh in you. He speaks through you. He speaks through you. Not that I went home to find out. Our ministry has no need. 1987, our total worth as a ministry was less than one million in a year. Our ministry has no need. And today, we are privileged to teach Americans biblical principles of prosperity. Our ministry has no needs. By the grace of God, there is no church in America will be invited to that will be a testimony. And I thank God they invited me there. No. There is no church in America today that has this crowd in second service only. There is no ministry in America that has it. Not just in number one. In content and in quality. <laughs> he refused to be called. He speaks through you. Hey, you have high blood pressure. No, not me. He's a speaking spirit. The spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. You don't cram it. You don't practice it. He speaks through you. Glory to God. My wife said to me, I had miscarriage. I said, it cannot happen. There is no, okay, let me think about it. He says, please take this thing this morning. Take this thing this morning. You can't be trained into it. You can only be imparted with it. You can't be trained into it. You can only be imparted with it. He speaks to you. You walk up to a church and say, God just spoke to me. It's time to get the aircraft. Are you mad? You didn't tell them before you are planning to buy an aircraft and we are not planning anything anyway. What is unique about the spirit of faith? It believes all things. How many things? Now, chapter 24 of Acts and verse 14. I'd like you to read it aloud. Everybody open it. Read that aloud. The spirit of faith believes all things. Now, let's read. One, two, go. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so have I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophet. Believing all things. Woo! Believing all things. Believing all things. And Paul said, and we having the same spirit of faith. What does that spirit do? Believing all things. Which makes you look heretic and erratic and irrational. Believing all things. Believing all things. Believing all things. God just spoke to me. It's time to spread out. And then you are going to the platform when God spoke to you. And then you still announce it. So man and brethren, we are out. By the month of May, going out. Believing all things. No protocols. Believing all things. As you pass on this one church. Believing all things. What if they don't come? Forget it. Believing all things. He speaks through you. I said, okay, no service holds in town. Everybody come down here. If you can come, you can come go to another church. Hey, Amen. Believe in all things. Believe in all things which are written in the law and the prophets. So they call me heretic. Believe in all things. So he empowers you to believe all things that come from the mouth of God to you. He does through the page of scriptures all by Rema. Believe in all things. That is the spirit of faith. I'm not. Look, we are not trying to practice it. You just need to possess it. 
Somebody's catching something here. Somebody's catching something here. Somebody's catching something here. He refused to be called. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose rather. They would choose what God says no matter at what cost. If I perish, I perish. They would choose whatever God says no matter at what cost. Considering the reproach of Christ, greater riches, greater riches, they don't care about the reproach. It is their approach to the throne. They don't care about it. Somebody's breaking forth. Thank you, Father. Therefore, this morning, because we need to round up now, just open your heart to receive the impartation of the spirit of faith that will launch you into the realms of breakthrough unlimited beginning with this year. In almost 30 years, we just breaking new grounds every time. Breaking what? New grounds every time. As the Lord liveth, whose I am and whom I serve. Before the month of May, we are already double the size. Yeah. I, I, I have heard from the Lord. I have heard. I have heard from the Lord. He's not trying to impress you. You know, I hear from God. And he speaks through me. I've heard from the Lord. <laughs> that before the month of May, we are minimum twice the present size as a church. Yeah. And for those who can receive it, before the end of March, you are minimum twice where you are now. Robara de cigarette season. Breaker et to see la practice. What is unique about the spirit of faith? And I said by choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproaches of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he, they kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry, ground, by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith. What does the spirit, what is the spirit of faith? The spirit of faith sees the invisible God as visible. Amen. Therefore, it thinks the unthinkable. What ordinary men will not think, he thinks it. And he speaks the unspeakable because he sees the invisible. And he dares the impossible. No man in his right mind will be going towards the Red Sea with three million people. The sea saw them with flame. The Egyptian thought, oh, this is good weather today. It has cleared the sea. They went inside and they were all drowned. It was not a chance. It was the spirit of faith clearing the way. This year, every Red Sea between you and your promised land is parting way for you. It was the spirit of faith at work that parted the Red Sea. So the spirit of faith sees the invisible, thinks the unthinkable, speaks the unspeakable, dares the impossible, and delivers the incredible. You, you can't imagine it, but it happens. And delivers the incredible. The spirit of faith Sees the invisible and thinks the unthinkable. You know what the Hebrew boy said? Our God, he said, Okay, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. To bow to your heart, forget it. 
our God who we serve is able to deliver us. And he will deliver us from your hand. <laughs> and even if he does not, woo, we will not bow. Hallelujah. We know him whom we have believed. We are too persuaded to be to be harassed. And they dare the impossible fiery furnace. And they came out with an incredible testimony. The spirit of faith. It makes you approach the fiery furnace rested. The den of lion smiling. Sleeping and refreshed in the midst of the storm. The spirit of faith. Somebody's blessed here. Somebody's blessed here. Somebody's blessed here. It is that same spirit that is inside these mantles. And as they come your way today, he said, Believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe also his prophets, and so shall ye be established. You shall prosper, you shall command breakthroughs. Believe also his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. When Elisha got back to Jordan, he took the mantle and struck the water. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the waters parted way. Whatever pathway for this commission must begin to part way for you from now. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And immediately he was shot into national fame. He took the place of Elijah, Elijah on the spot. Somebody's changing level dramatically by this impartation. Somebody's changing level dramatically by this impartation. You remember the testimony of that elder? He said, when they saw the things on the gate, they passed over. This is a dangerous man. Oh. We mustn't get here. See, I'm a winner. Breakthrough unlimited. Can't you see? Can't you see the picture of that lion there? You get there, it will eat you up. It will eat you up fresh. There is no guesswork. It will eat you up fresh. Now, listen to me. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The same order of breakthrough that this commission has been enjoying in 30 years. You are stepping into it practically today. Sometimes last week I got, got a call from one country and asking us to come and help out the education system of their nation. I'm asking church, God is changing the level of Zion. And Zion is a people, not a building. This year, the same way they called for Joseph, they will send for you. You know what it means for a president to say, I've been trying to get him on the phone. I can't get him. Please, please help me get him. Call another one who was president. Please get him for me. You are not in an ordinary year. Yes, All you need is empowerment yes, to match God's purpose for your life this year. You need that level of empowerment. The spirit of faith. Please understand that empowerment is in degrees. So you must crave access to another level you have been hanging around some level for for a long time you must crave an access into another level that's the whole reason that's the whole essence of january 2011 to move you forcefully upward and i see you get there <laughs> hear this no madman has ever walked into fire in his madness Nobody needs to stop a madman. Please, that is fire. That's fire. No. 
that tells you how much the devil respects fire. The things tormenting you today, when the fire, your bonfire goes off, they will clear off. He said, when we sense a higher power on the way, we clear off the highway. When we sense what? A higher power. I told you that story in 1979. When we sense a higher power on the way, we clear off the highway. When we sense a higher power, 1.30 a.m. I was going from here to town, 1999, and Robert saw, saw my car and said, hey, take cover. It's coming. Take cover. There was no police. There was no soldier. Take, when we sense a higher power, the armed robber that we say, stop, is not born. I say, it's not born. Amen. If all the armed robbers that were killed come back to life, they can't stand my way. Amen. If I fasten my eyes on you, you are dead. There is no go come. There is no go come about you. Are no, they see fire, they clear. Beginning from now, everything that has ever tormented you starts clearing the way for you. Hear this. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Come on, you know what the shield of faith is? The spirit of faith. Taking the spirit of faith. Above all, taking what? We are we to be able to quench all oh, the fiery that above all taking the spirit of faith above all Ephesians 6 16 taking the spirit of faith we are with you shall quench all the fiery thoughts of the devil above all taking the spirit of faith above all taking the spirit of faith we are with you to quench all the fiery thoughts of the devil above all Taking the spirit of faith. That is the ultimate of faith. The spirit of faith is the ultimate of faith. And it is a transferable virtue. This morning, open your heart. I'm not, I'm, I'm bothered about the level at which you're operating. Open your heart. Open your heart. Open your heart. He believeth all things. If anyone believes in me, even though he were dead, he will live. You don't need to bother about him. He will come back by himself. <laughs> he will be stirred up by himself. I don't care what may be dead in your body. Today, by the impartation of the spirit of faith, I decree supernatural resuscitation. I decree supernatural resurrection. They stoned Paul to death. They drew him out of the city. The brethren gathered around him to plan his burial. He jacked up by himself. He was too anointed for death to make a mince meat. He got up. He said, whether to go or not to go, I don't even know. You know, to go is better for me because I need to, to, to have my rest in the heavens. But to abide here is better for you. So for your sake, the way you are looking, I will stay. He was absolutely in command of death. He said, if you can believe, you will see the glory of God. And the dead came back to life. He said, be not afraid, believe only. So it is the shield of faith that generates life inside you. Somebody's blessed here. What a great way to get the year started. And whatever the spirit of the Lord doeth, what happens? It is forever. I don't care where effort will take you, but effort does not guarantee posterity. No, there are many S grade this and S grade that. But when your greatness comes by the spirit, it stays forever. It stays forever. It stays forever. Abraham's walk is still speaking to now. Several thousands of years since he walked the earth. Is forever. Is forever. Therefore, this morning set yourself for a lifetime encounter. Hallelujah. Set yourself for a lifetime encounter. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If there's anyone here in this service this morning that's not born again yet, that is your number one step into empowerment. Let the stewards now take their positions. Everyone who desire today the impartation of the spirit of faith, 
in one minute, lift up your voices. Lord, I desire the impartation of the spirit of faith today that will launch me into that realm of breakthrough unlimited. Let it be, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Three things will be happening at the same time. As this mantle goes round, you touch your forehead with it. You have your mantle in your pocket. Bring it out and touch it with it all in one second and pass it to the next person. You are praying as you receive it. And then you're praying after you are passing on to the and you keep praying in the spirit, appropriating the delivery. Please don't just have religious fun in the year 2011. Engage practically, engage wholesomely in what is happening here. And you find it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? And throughout this year, don't let no man to leave your pocket. As you get home, you mark some mantles, mark them, the prophet's mantle, the prophet's mantle. And then one is in your car, or you put one, one in each of your cars, they become unsnatchable forever. Yeah. You put one in your house, the spirit of the prophet will be there 24-7. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. And you hold one in your pocket. Whatever opens up to the prophet opens up to you. The year will be your most awesome year forever. <laughs> Somebody took the mantle in those days and struck because he had a disease. The air could not be plated. It was like there was sore under every strand of air on her head. Affliction unbelievable. As he struck the bed, he was asked to strike everything in their home. A lifeboat came out. A lifeboat came out of the bed. And that was the end of the plague. The oppression of the devil is stopping finally today. Yeah. The anointing of every prophet is in his mantle. <laughs> he said the air, oil that was on the head of Aaron was came down his beard and to his head. To his head. And then to his foot, wherever he steps into. Can I hear your amen? amen? So expect the impartation of the spirit of faith that is driving this commission from glory to glory. Amen. That unlimited breakthrough unction is your portion today. Yes. Said, and God wrought special miracles. Somebody here needs a special miracle. Amen. Everybody has concluded it cannot be done. But today, as the spirit of faith comes on you, that special miracle will be delivered into your hand. Yeah. Diseases were healed. Today, whatever is called a sickness or disease in your body, by this man to ministry, it is declared healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And evil spirits went out of them. So everyone been tormented by evil spirits. I give you this announcement by the Holy Ghost today. This day is declared your day of liberty. Yeah. Everybody lift up your voices and begin to draw your desires. Reto secleria. Radike netosia. Rabalake. Netosia. Radi prekteneboria yeshanga. Reto sine. Kenotamba. In Jesus name and draw praying in the spirit i tap into the same order of the spirit of faith in my prophet today i'm changing level dramatically jordan is giving way to me now go ahead and minister on your head on the mantle in your hand goes to the next person one minute nobody stands up until when it has come on you after you have been touched place it on your head place that mantle on your head something is been drawn into your system right now the spirit of faith the healing virtue the virtue of special miracles is going into your system now it's going into your system now it's going into your system now 
everybody everywhere begin to pray in the spirit as the man to touches you just place the mantle on your hair after you have been touched and then begin to pray in the spirit the spirit of faith that sees the invisible that thinks the unthinkable that speaks the unspeakable that dares the impossible that delivers the incredible is going into your system now everybody begin to prophesy over your life begin to speak forth speak forth speak forth speak forth i am stepping into another realm today hands everybody and begin to appropriate by the word of prophecy in the spirit and in your understanding I have received today a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith I hold in my hand a breakthrough mantle I hold in my hand a breakthrough mantle I've received today a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith I have my special miracles every sickness and disease is gone out of my body every evil spirit is left me alone i'm walking in the realm of supernatural triumph come on now begin to prophesy over your life in jesus precious name take that mantle up lift it up before the lord Some years ago, a woman testified in the old church, accosted by ritual killers, and while looking for a house, he walked into the dungeon of ritual killers, and he saw some pots there filled with blood, and saw some men, hefty men, without any shirt, but only short naked. Well, you have come to the end of your road, he said. And she reached out her hand into her bag and took the bottle of the anointing oil and splashed the ground, and it caught fire. What, what, what? And the boy he took in his hand, he had one on the back and one on the hand. The devil wanted to destroy the entire family that day. The boy started saying, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. But the door was shut and they could not open the door. So the man in charge said, told the other one, open the door. I can't, I can't get there, I can't get there. So the woman took her mantle and waved the mantle at the door and the door opened on his own. <laughs> Friends, you are carrying a strange thing in your hand. 
in the name of Jesus Christ welcome to your realms of breakthrough unlimited by this impartation today I declare your graves open By this impartation today, I declare your special miracles delivered. By this impartation today, I decree your instant healing. By this impartation today, I decree your deliverance from every oppression. In the name of Jesus. Someone died and they got him to the house and the boy came out from the Bible school. They said, your uncle is dead. He said, look, I'm coming. And he took the man to and struck the man. One, two, three. The man said, hey, why are you beating me? The dead jacked back to life. So you are holding in your hand a carrier of resurrection power. Whatever is called dead in your body is back to life now. Nothing dies around you this year. Somebody died in Kaduna in the hospital and they said they should go and look for ambulance. And the sister-in-law came to the pastor. The pastor said, take this mantle and go there. And as they robbed the body of the dead with the mantle, he sneezed and jacked back to life and was in church the Sunday that followed. Friends, by this mantle, no weeping or money in your family. In the name of Jesus. If you see it as handkerchief, it will be handkerchief. If you see it as power, it will be power. He said, as far as your eyes can see, I will give you. If you think it's handkerchief, it is handkerchief. If you think it's power, it is power. Now I decree the manifestation of God's unbeatable power through this mantle in your hand in the name of Jesus. It is done. Power to believe all things is yours today. By believing all things, we built Covenant University just in seven months. Construction began March. We packed into the place October. Believing all things through the instrumentality of the spirit of faith. All the packages God has in stock for you 2011. None shall be lost to unbelief. In the name of Jesus. This week is declared a week of testimonies for you. Your breakthrough testimonies begin today. Your breakthrough testimonies begin today. Your breakthrough testimonies begin today. Your breakthrough testimonies begin now. This week is your week of testimonies. This week is your week of testimony. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. David Oyedepo has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedepo, 21688 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Call 774-7546, 774-7547, 774-7548. And best of all, come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land, Kilometer 10, Idiroko Road, Otah.